be winds of change, whatever you want to call it. I, I continue, Jason, to hold out hope that one day, one day, my wife will actually replace the toilet paper on the roll and not just put it on the ground next to the toilet. Oh, for you to do it? While there's, I counted yesterday, three cardboard toilet paper rolls that have been spent two on the ground and one on the roller itself and then it like how we have a waste basket right there mm. how hard is it to take it and throw it away and replace it my kids do i can't just blame her the kids do the same thing but i blame her because it's a pet peeve of mine so where else do they learn it right jason yeah wow i can't believe you ripped my wife like that <laughs> joining us right now <laughs> on the program uh, the one, the only, and I'm sure she replaces the paper on the roll all the time. TV analyst for your Sacramento Kings, Katie Christensen. Uh, good morning, Katie. Good morning. Is there a reason you told the story about the toilet paper before talking to a woman? No. I oh. no what no I no I what no, no you would never do that. Good morning. Good morning. Although I did, uh, I, I will say to be fair, it would be kind of irresponsible of me to to not lead in with you I, I was explaining in the, last, in the last segment we finally after putting it off forever and probably should have put it off even longer the the growing chorus of whatever that um you know the las vegas aces could wh what would happen if they played a high school team what would happen if they played a college team what would happen if they played an nba team so we we, we finally dealt with it but more in the case of like less in the case of should i say of x's nose like well who would win and more about I think the analogy I used towards the end was something like, um, I think we can all agree that the men's college basketball champion uh, would not beat an NBA team. We, we know that. We know that. But I don't find myself watching the Final Four, March Madness, or anything like that going, you know, I can't really enjoy it that much because they're not the NBA. And I know that's a sloppy analogy, but we were trying to come up with really why this is a conversation and why – the WNBA can't be the WNBA and the NBA can't be the NBA. And I said, my best friend for the last decades, a stinking WNBA player. And this, and I, I didn't tell specifics, but the stories you've told me before, not, not of, you know, I got to play with her or her or her, but the struggle, the, the, the things you guys went through, the, the, all, all the crap, you know, has always given me this undying love and respect for the sport and the women that play it, but it's just a weird conversation. That's an understatement. Um, is it why do you think it's weird for you you know um i don't know i you're talking about homeboy that went on and said that a high school boys yeah. team could yeah the, we didn't even say his name faces. but more people yeah. are starting to get involved well, in the conversation you know what's, what's interesting is i saw that like when it came out and like it made me angry initially and then i'm like oh he's just a he's just a complete freaking idiot like and here's the thing is like i think sometimes people need they need to say some something controversial so that someone's talking about them. And I feel like he kind of fits into that category. But, you know, from the perspective of someone that played in the WNBA, um, I think that we're all very aware that there's probably a pretty significant piece of the sports, male sports viewing population that may think that. But at the same time, it's like, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to make it happen so that, you can either prove them right or prove them wrong. Um, it just comes down to someone that, you know, and there's, there's way too many of these people in the world that something good happens in women's sports. And what a certain population of, of men need to do is they need to show just, you know, what complete morons and chauvinistic pigs they are. And they need someone to be talking about them. And, and it's like, you know what, I, I, to me, it just, it's, it's kind of a tired argument um, because I think all it's, it's trying to do is to take away something great from uh, a women's sports team that have had two consecutive seasons of just domination. They've got, you know, one of the, the best female coaches uh, around, obviously coached in the, in the NBA, Becky Hammond, also need to take a little bit um, – it's like you got to be put in your place. Oh, by the way, you guys are still women. So just a just a yearly reminder that you guys are women, and there are still men that do not respect what you do, and we're never going to change their mind. Um, I feel really bad for the women in their life. 
Yeah, I mean, that's well said, Katie, because I think there have been men's minds that have been changed and those that haven't won't. And that's, but I think that's the same. Like, there's people that I don't watch the NBA because of this. I don't watch the NFL because of this. I think everybody has their reason, but there's plenty of people that do watch it and enjoy it. So let them be and enjoy what they're doing. Yeah, no, it's just, I think it's people that are searching for relevancy and in and, and, and doing so, um, they have to demean uh, really an entire you know, population of female athletes. Is there a way to have the conversation about the X and O's without it being demeaning in your opinion? I mean, I'm asking you, is there scientifically a way to have the, is there somebody out there that is equipped to have the conversation without it being demeaning in your opinion? I mean, possibly, I, I guess for I don't me, know. Yeah. it's, it's like, you know, I, I, I don't think you're going to find any women that are going to say, there's no way that this is, you know, of course they're going to be the, the women, of course, because women are, are not equal to men. They're not the same type of athletes. They don't have the physical strength of men. Like that it's, you're going to find people that are going to make that argument for sure. But I don't understand. I guess I just don't understand what the, what the relevance. What's the win? Is. What's the point? What's yeah, the, yeah. like, what's, the, what's the point? Like, wh why are we doing it? We're never going to convince everybody. The only way for it to ever happen is, is for, you know, that, you know, theoretical game to take place and the women would have to win. And then it's like, in theory, it would put that argument to bed, but you know what? I know that it wouldn't. No there would be some kind of an excuse. Well, they just had a bad day, right. you know, Oh, they, you know, let's the, see them play an NBA team. That's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's never going to end. So, you know, I understand from a radio perspective, you guys having done the job, you know, in the past. And I understand from a sports media um, perception that you, you know, you kind of got to talk about things. Um, but at the same time, it's like, when are they going to not have um, like, when are we just going to stop having the conversation? Yeah. You know, it's like, what's, what's the win here? It's a great point. Uh, Katie, I, I would have rather have watched the aces and Liberty, I think, than the here, here. Kings and Rockets here, here. Uh, the last two nights. <laughs> and I think the, the, the biggest center, and you were there obviously for both was, was the second one. I mean, the first one happens, can happen, will likely happen again as far as a clunker, but to back it up with the same team in the same city while you were stewing on that previous loss honestly shocked me. Um, what, In your best view, what happened in Houston to the Kings? I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, it just – at first, I want to give credit to Houston. I don't want – you know, listen, the Kings are, are a team that, that did so well last year, and now all these eyes are on them, and they have two consecutive games without De'Aaron Fox where – quite honestly, they just got, they just got their, you know, butts handed to them, like legitimately by a, by a young team um, with a coach that after being suspended for an entire NBA season and going through what he did, like their focus really is on, on trying to gain some respect around the league and they deserve it. You know, that is a good, that is a good team. It's got some really talented young players on it and some really, you know, significantly talented veterans that can make a big difference for them and they're playing defense and offensively they're way more disciplined and like watching watching their games going into it I was like oh dear you know this is not going to be an easy game I think the first game was more of a thing of where you know they played incredibly well without De'Aaron Fox against Golden State they they lost by one point on the road um, but it's easy to get up for games like Golden State I just think that there wasn't there was a lack of respect for their opponent in game one and game two. I'm still mystified about, I not, I, I'm, I was so shocked in how they came out and how they continued to struggle um, defensively, particularly. I mean, I think that was the biggest problem for them offensively, this team, even without the air. And I think they can always find a way to score. Yes. Keegan has really been struggling with the three. Kevin Herter played better. It seems like he's starting to come around a little bit, but I'm, I, it was just, stunning how bad they were in, in game two. I mean, even worse than game one, they got down by 40 points. So I, I think, you know, it's one of those things where I, I think I said it on the air, you guys, I would prefer for them to have to face this type of adversity early in the season so that it opens their eyes to the fact that this is an NBA, 
where the parody is so ridiculous. Any night, and I know we say this all the time, any night, you know, any given NBA team can beat another, but this is like the most true statement, you know, now than it was ever in the past. So I think that when you look at kind of how they play, there's a, there's a huge level of disappointment and shock to a certain degree, but I'm glad that they kind of got it handed to them because it's an eye-opening experience early in the season to realize that they have to, to take every team seriously. They cannot go in thinking that they are better regardless. Katie Christensen, TV analyst for the Kings, and uh, she was on with uh, our own Kyle Draper uh, during that game. And and I want to stand with Katie here in a second because as, as somebody who's never professionally broadcast, you know, well, I guess I was an analyst for the Republic for three years. So, yeah, I'm part of the family. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, like, here's the thing. When you're doing play-by-play or, or you're analyzing the game, like, you can only go so far. And I... I felt like in watching the game Saturday, like I felt really bad for you guys, not in the sense that like I know you love your jobs and blah, blah, blah. But like no matter what you say, it's going to sound dumb at some point. And dumb in the sense that like, well, they're getting their asses kicked. Well, uh, I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like there's nothing – if you yeah. if you try to break it down in like a way where you try to help understand what's happening, you're a shill and you're being too soft on them. But if you go the other way and you hammer them and like, I'm just not seeing much heart on this team or these guys are really, they're, they're not showing the, uh, the, the, the heart and the, the passion that I expect. Now all of a sudden, why are you even on the broadcasts? Because you, mm-hmm. you, you obviously are a Rockets fan. Where did that broadcast rank Katie? Cause you've been in broadcasting for what? 30 plus years. Where did oh, that God. broadcast rank as far as toughest broadcasts you've ever done? That was the, by hand, the toughest game I've ever called. Wow. And um, and not even just called, right? It's the toughest game I've ever been a part um, since I joined the Kings. And listen, we, we went through a lot of bad years since I got here in the 06, 07 season. As everyone listening knows, we have been through some bad years. The reason this game was the hardest game uh, to call and the hardest game to be a part um, is because this team is so much better than that. And in the past, it's like, you know what? The talent level wasn't there. The roster wasn't there. Um, they were just not, they were not up to par, if you will. And that is not the case anymore. So it's hard because you, you kind of walk a fine line, you guys. And Jason, you understand this too, of like, you need to point out what's going wrong. But when it's the same thing over and over again, you feel like you're piling on. But if you're not being honest during the broadcast, I, you never want to come across as like the lady wearing the purple goggles. You know, yeah. you don't want to be the one making excuses. But you and as the former player in me is I never want to blame or attack players and say, well, this is his fault. Look what he did. Um, and so it's it's a fine line that you walk to kind of call the game for what it is. Um, but also not force people into a panic either. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. No, as somebody who you know grew up playing soccer and was an analyst for three years for the Republic, I feel the same way. Like <laughs> you don't want to, you don't, you know, athletes like us, we don't want to blame wow. the players because we know what it was like. Oh, Dave. You know, what back when? Uh, no, I was I was sitting there thinking during that broadcast. Honestly, um, I I don't recall ever in my playing career at any level of being a part of a game like that as a player. Cause I was trying to think, okay, have, have I been in this position before and what did it feel like now? Like my first year in Phoenix, we were not a great team. We were like, you know, bottom of the barrel in the WNBA, but like we lost games by, you know, less than 10 points. You know, we fought and we battled and we were in games and there was never a game to me that, that I can recall where it's just like, you just got embarrassed. Like you got, you know, 30, 40 point embarrassed. Like I don't ever in, in the history of my career being a part of a game where I was down to that degree. So I was trying to relate. I was trying to remember. And I'm like, gosh, I just, I can't relate to this one, but I can relate to, to not playing well when your team is underperforming and it just seems like everything is going wrong. Right. And the the mentality as a player to like you have to and, and the coaching staff they're going to look at that stuff but there's a fine line between looking at it and and kind of 
kind of ripping confidence from people. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't. So it's, yeah. it's an interesting line they have to walk going into this game against Portland today. And honestly, when it, maybe it just came down to a lack of energy from the Kings. And, and Katie, I'll tell you, <laughs> you know, when you're needing energy, you go to the people uh, I tell you to go to. That's American Energy Heating and Air. Stick around with us, Katie, as uh, we'll continue the interview right after this. I do have to stop in and ask. Uh, Katie, when was the last time you had your... Uh, Hold on. Uh, when was the last time you had an inspection of your uh, air conditioning and heating unit? Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, it's been a, a minute. I mean, mine was brand new when I moved into this house. So yeah. Not, not haven't been here two years. It's probably time, Dave. Yeah, it is probably time, Katie. With the young one at home, you know, those filters after they're filtering out all the smoke and pollens and all that, they get filled up, and that's how you get the sneezes. And being that uh, you and your entire family are constantly sick, maybe maybe it's time to uh, call up American Energy and get yourself the $49 tune-up going on right now. They will check out everything. They'll make sure that you're all set up, good to go, and that everything is working in proper order. Now, uh, winter is coming up, and uh, Katie grew up in a a tiny little northeastern corner of California where they have real winters, but let's be honest, it gets nipply a little bit around here, and we all want to deal with that be warm and comfortable so you want to deal with a company that you've been uh dealing with since 1981 uh since katie was in college a plus better business bureau and uh, so much more so give them a call at uh, 916-520-9990 that's 916-520-9990 or and i'll text you this after the uh the show katie uh, go to american energy air uh, com. Uh, thank you so katie you get all that i did okay yes yes college in the 80s <laughs> <laughs> which 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 got you more college in the 80s or uh, you and your family are always sick you know i come on here just to be abused <laughs> by you weekly <laughs> did you wash your handkerchiefs yet i did we i talk, have like we, like 15 of them to wash yeah, yeah. we talked about it. yeah it takes 15 bandanas on the <laughs> road and just fills them up uh jason the uh, i believe the question is yours friend. oh well thank you yeah, you're that. welcome um, so Katie, now it's about moving forward, right? I mean, those were brutal games. There's no way around it. You said it. We just, we saw it. We described it. Um, tonight to me feels like it's nothing about Portland. It's all about the Kings and their house. How, how do you feel about just the Kings approach to, to this evening against the Blazers? Yeah, you know, from a mentality standpoint, it does have to be about them, and it has to be about how they come out. And I'm I'm glad that they're home at Golden One Center for a few games before they go back on the road for, you know, like 10, 11 days, something crazy like that. Um, because they, they kind of need, you know, sometimes how, you know, when, when something goes wrong with your kid, you know, they don't need you to, you know, break it down to them, Dave. Uh, they just need you to give them a hug and support them. I feel like that's where the Kings are right now. They need like golden one center to like, give them a hug. They just want to vent. And yeah, like just, just <laughs> have the opportunity to go out there and, ha- and feel the love from their home fans as they're trying to work through some stuff. I- I'm going to be completely honest. Portland is a good team. You guys, I don't know how much you watched of them. Um, obviously they have a couple of serious injuries now at this point with that. Anthony Simons is out after having surgery on his hand. Um, he obviously is a key piece for them. Robert Williams, who came over in that trade from Boston, he injured himself in that series against Memphis, uh, against Memphis. And so he's out, but they added a ton of really capable, experienced veterans to their squad, like Malcolm Brogdon. Like they have some really talented guys out there and it looks like a much different team, uh, than they did a year ago. And so this is not going to be an easy, an easy game at all. And it kind of has the trappings of, of the Houston series in the sense that this is a team that kind of picks bottom of, of the barrel in the, in the Western Conference. Like, you, you have to come out and show the ultimate respect for this team because if you don't and you don't prep well, you don't fix the things like, you know, blow, blow by dribble uh, drives into the lane, those types of things, like, you're going to get beat again. So, uh, you know, this is, this is a great team, and I, I, I have faith in the Kings. Um, and really, it's, it's about a learning experience to see how they respond to this. So I'm kind of excited to see how they come out and start the game today. Okay, so just to wrap up here, you're saying the Kings, uh, much like when you or uh, Melissa, I, I've learned this over the years, have, have going through something, maybe you just want to vent, you don't want solutions thrown at you, you just want love and support and a hug, not 
not solution oriented and to tell you what to do. That's kind of where we're at with the team. Give him a big yeah, hug. I was more, I was more relating it to when Avery comes to her dad, but yes, very, <laughs> very similar to that. Avery so. comes to her dad. I say, Grizzer. Oh my God. What is that wrong? I feel for your children. By the way, <laughs> you love my children. By the way, I do. Um, uh, I, I, I brought in, I made a pasole two days ago and I brought yeah. some in for Jason and, uh, and Chris for a lot. And I accentuated it with, uh, the jalapenos from your garden. So I want you to yeah, know. Chris, Chris told me when I called in, he's like, wow, I had some of those jalapenos from your garden. They were amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're good. They're good jalapenos. Yeah. Right. Jason. Yeah. I stayed away from, I was scared. Yeah. I was a scared. They're better going in. Yeah, Katie, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dear. Have a great call tonight. Thank you so much, as always, for being smart and uh, schooling us on everything. And hopefully, uh, we get a win tonight. And tonight's game is uh, as tough as Saturday's was to call. I hope it's uh, as easy tonight. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys from the road next week, then. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Katie Christensen, and uh, you know that's that's the thing. When she does these games too, she is prepping. Like, I'll call her up when I go. the show's over at, like, 11 a.m., and she's got her little uh, teacher glasses on, mm. and she's got, like, her boards her and charts everything. and everything. She, she's not going into these games, just in case you wondered, winging it or anything, much like they would at Fire Wings, for example, where today's Wings a uh, Wednesday.